Hi, I'm Yuri. Um, some of you might know me. I do a lot of open source stuff, map stuff, Wikipedia stuff, Wikidata stuff, break things. I do a very good job at that. Uh, work at Elastic. Haven't broken anything there, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Um, let's get started. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about Wikidata, open street maps, and other data sources, data validation. I really like this image. It kind of highlights um, how we're trying to bring multiple communities together, uh, despite these communities' desire not to join and really stay separate. And oh, I'm sorry, we like our swamp better. I don't like your swamp. You stay there, we stay here. Uh, how many of you have experienced that? Like this, like we do not want to deal with the other people's stuff. We we can create problems of our own here. Well, that's one of the things I'm trying to bridge. Let's share problems. Let's not work instead of working them individually. Um, some of you may have seen this building. We are in it. Uh, so I decided to use that as an example, as like a leeway. How do we talk about something fun and data oriented? Well, let's tie it to the ground, to the building we're actually in. So Sparkle, that's the first swear word you will hear today about it. Uh, how many of you have heard of that word, Sparkle? Excellent. It's, it's trickling out there. Um, so whenever you deal with Wikidata, or actually any kind of graph database. You have to query it somehow, and since it's a graph, you cannot really use the regular SQL with it, or a key value store, where you cannot just give it a key and get, get whatever you need. What you need is a special language that can traverse those graph links. It's, a, it's not a very complicated language. It only took me a couple of years to learn it. Um, because I was lazy, mostly. But essentially, it's like this. You say, for that ID, and you, that ID you might have noticed from right there, from the, well, from right here. See that ID? It's a node ID. Oh, uh, sorry, way ID. Um, give me its name, the address, city, and the Wikidata tags. So we're those are the three things we're interested in. And they should end up in the name, city, and WD variables. And just return them to me. And the result you see at the bottom. So fairly straightforward. Um, that allows us to get a very basic information out of the system. But the thing is, the beauty of all this system is that you can federate to other systems. For example, this query, here, the, the, at the top, it's the same query that you s just saw. But then you say, and then go out into the Wikidata and get the corresponding data from that data source, you know, merging the, the swamps type of thing. It's, that's, that, it's already done, kind of. Um, so it allows you to do that. It allows you to get the interesting information from another system. Moreover, it actually, you can ask that system to go to yet the third system, and it all merges together. Because in a graph, all these systems are designed to work together. Design, you, can, you can go as far as, uh, into as many different systems as you need to, as long as the bandwidth is there and you're under one minute query execution time, you're good. So that allowed me to get the image of this building I mean, for some reason, OSM doesn't store images. Maybe we should go to Mapillary. Any Mapillary people here? Um, or some other system. But essentially, uh, that allowed me to get the, the image from the commons into here. But on top of that, it also allowed me to get the architect of the building. And on top of that, since it's a graph, architect was born somewhere. So I went to along that link and discovered that the architect was born in Lebanon. How many of you knew this? Well, probably none of you. I, I did not know it before this morning either. Oops, I just spilled the beans on when I was preparing this presentation. Um, anyway, you can get all this interesting graph information uh, in, about any object, and you can continuously reason out using multiple systems. A very, very brief introduction. How many technical people or people who consider themselves semi-technical do we have in the room? 
I'm just wondering if I should go into this. Okay, good enough. Uh, let's let's go into a little bit of technicalities. So graph databases or graph indexes or Sparkle or DF or Triple Store, they're all pretty much the same, talk about the same thing. Uh, most of you know what SQL databases are, a whole bunch of tables. With Triple Store, you only have one table. They just give you one table and only three columns in that table. Oh, kind of limiting. But in that three columns, you express all your data, all of it. In the first column, you say, what are you talking about? Which, what's the subject? In the second column, in this case, we are having the different, like an ID of the object, like a way ID for this, in this case, but it could be anything. And you can mix any kind of IDs all in the same column. Essentially, it's a URI. In the second column, you, you say, what's the property? What's the predicate of that thing? So for example, Everest has a height of, I don't know, 10 kilometers. That's expressed as triple columns. The last column being an object or either a value or a link to something else. Uh, or you can say Everest is located in, is located in as a predicate, and then in Nepal. And Nepal was created as a country in such and such a year. And it borders such and such countries whose presidents are, and you can just go infinitely into this data. And all of this is stored in Wikidata, which this is why it's so wonderful. You can actually get some useful stuff out of it. And just to make it simpler, instead of writing URIs, we write little prefixes. See, it's almost the same. They just abbreviate that first long thing, so it's easier to understand. There's a whole bunch of different standard prefixes you can use. How are we doing on time? We're good. So you can do these kind of queries. For example, this query just says, give me everything you have, like whatever is in the second column, whatever is in the third column, we don't care, those are variables. And as long as the first column has that ID, I'm interested in it. So that's how all of Sparkle works. You just learned it. I wasted a year of my life on this, but made it shorter for you. Metadata. But before we go to metadata, let me just do some demos. You know, like it's no fun to just watch slides. I mean, it, I had a lot of fun making them, but you know, like. Um, all right, so this is what Wikidata looks like if you haven't seen that thing. Like my uh, alumni center just has uh, descriptions in multiple languages, labels in multiple languages, and a whole bunch of statements. It's an instance of a building, it's an image this, it's a country, United States, and you can really have pretty much any predicate, whatever the community decides to describe. And whatever values, you can have multiple values if you need to. Current location owned by architect, this, this is the thing I was showing you. Um, and this is the query uh, showing you with all the different interesting information returning. Um, you can have much more interesting stuff. And I think uh, my colleague is gonna be talking about it after this, but very brief preview of this, you can actually query uh, the SawFox service, which I've been talking all this time about, to get the country outlines or any shapes from OpenStreetMap connected to Wikidata. So this query, for example, says, oh, uh, go to Canada, find all the regions that are sub, that are included like basically uh, county? No, not counties. So provinces, thank you. Uh, so provinces, and for each of these provinces, get me the flag, the, I don't know, name in multiple languages and the outlines and return them to me. And this is what this query does and this is what it looks like. I'm not gonna risk run, running the query in the live demo, but let's presume I just hit play and that's what it returned, okay? So you can see like these are the shapes and all this metadata got, got returned here. But I'm not gonna sp steal more of your demos. All right, let's go to metadata. It's always fun. Metadata. What are the data consumers goals? How many here are data consumers or consider themselves users of the data? Okay, some, some hands good. Okay, right, well. Essentially, I summed up our needs as we want very low barrier of entry. We do not want to do work. Well, no one does, but we really do not want to do any kind of work. We just want to take it and use it. Whatever we, the consumers, want to create, that's what we want to do. We want to understand everything without spending too much time on it and 
do nothing to, uh, in other words, clear contract between the data and us, the consumers of that data. What are the contributor goals? We want flexibility. That thing, that object that we're just describing is really weird. We, we really have to have tons of different tags to describe that thing. And we want guidance, convenience, so that like ID editor or some other editor should really walk us through whatever we want to do. And obviously be valued and needed. Actually, I should have put it as, as a first point because like, what's the point of contributing is if, I, if I don't do something that's actually useful to anyone? Um, well, we have a metadata woos. This is the, as of this morning, 76,000 and a half unique keys in a, in a tag info database. That's the, the things we use to identify objects in the world. 6,000 of them grew this last year. And the problem is most of them are not documented. Most of them are used just at most five times. Usually it's like one at best, essentially. Just you have one key somewhere in some random object and no one has any clue what it means. That's the majority of them. And the thing is that I believe these things have negative value. It's not a positive or neutral value. They're negative because they take more time for people, especially who consume the data, they need to understand it. They need to dig in, understand, maybe communicate with the original author, try to understand what they meant, possibly in a different language. Hard. This is what it looks like for tag info. I'm not sure if you can see it from there. On the left is the first page of tag info, the most popular keys. Building is the, the most popular. It's three, 358 million of them. Well, guess what? Even on the first page, it dro very quickly drops to 15 million, which is okay. That's totally normal. But the problem is on the, five, uh, the page 500, we already see less than 300 usages of these keys. And most of them, like I'm looking at them, uh, some of them make sense to me, but uh, I don't know, MW shape ID, uh, most of you probably wouldn't be able to tell me what it is. So, and that's fi uh, page 500 out of almost 5,000 pages of these keys. So by the time you scroll to 1,000, you get what, just a few? And then it just very, it's a long tail problem. Just, and the, the bigger problem is the meaning problem. No one understands what it is. All right, data items to the rescue. Let me do some demos then. I have to show you things, otherwise you get bored. And that's what I learned the hard way. Um, so let's first go to, there we go. Most of you are familiar with the wiki, our OSM wiki. And it's wonderful source of information, sometimes inaccurate, but wonderful. Um, everything is inaccurate. OSM is inaccurate too. In, in many cases, more, more inaccurate than Wiki. But uh, we, we hope to clean it up and make it better. So on the right side, uh, we have the info box, which in theory should present very concise view of what this object is. Description, what type of elements it should be used on, uh, what's the status of the usage. I mean, de facto, no one really voted on this thing, but everyone's assuming name is should be there. So it was, it's kind of like a fact of thing. Another matter information. Well, now we also have, if you click on this little pencil, gray pencil, you get the data item. Data item is the structured data that has the same information in a computer readable way. Yay. So that means that now it means that, like this QID number, just like in Wikidata, has the description, the labels, the instance of permanent key, what it can be used on. And you can see here the discrepancies between different documentation already. You see, the status of this key is de facto in every wiki page language, except traditional Chinese and German. There it says it's in use. I do not know which one is better, the de facto for, every, for everything in use for those two, but it probably should be the same. Because I mean, it doesn't matter what language you're mapping in. You should use the same rules. It, it does matter what locale you're in, because in some locales, you might have slightly different rules, like um, that community, local community decided that they needed so, certainly different rules. But the language shouldn't affect it. 
I mean, if I live in, I don't know, Canada or Switzerland, there's like four, four official languages there in the tiny little territory. Does it mean that if I map in Germany, I, in German, if I'm German speaker in Switzerland, I should use different uh, rules, uh, documentation than if I uh, speak Swiss French? Or, well, I'm, I'm horrible at remembering what languages they speak, but... That's an issue, and this data item allows us to quickly find these concerns. <coughs> um, so you get all this information in the data structured way. But they're kind of painful to edit this way, so because you have to know which specific properties to use, which ones not to use. So just uh, my most recent project that I and still rolling out to OSM Wiki is an editor. You can actually, when you're on this page, you can click uh, this link and you, you need to do a little step to enable it uh, that I've uh, pu published in various uh, uh, notification boards on the Wiki itself. You click on it and then that data item gets loaded and shown to you as a nice form with multiple pages and you can actually edit things here. Just a work in progress. Uh, to make editing these stuff, uh, th these data items much easier and more friendly to the users. Um, data items are much more elaborate than just storing information that we already have. You can do any kind of information. This is a structured data that you can put whatever you want in a way that computers can understand. So, for example, for population, I edit a field called regex validation rule, and which says this value, or this field should have just the digits and nothing but the digits. Well, that's good, but what's the value of that? Well, then you can actually use Softbox service again to first of all, get that value out. See right there, you say, okay, I want the population and I want to get the regex from that data item. And then use that regex against the data of OSM itself. So when I run this query, I all of a sudden get the OSM, uh, OSM objects that viol viol uh, violate that rule. See, for example, here it's population. Yes, that's a very helpful information. It does have population. Uh, should we allow this value? I mean, maybe it is. Maybe that regex should be changed. Or maybe we should just fix the, that object instead of saying yes or minus one. I've never seen any, any city having negative one population, but maybe, uh, I'm sure it's been there for a while. So this brings back together the ability to store metadata together with some validation rules, whichever rules we want, those are declarative, as well as actually running queries against the real data and mix them together. On top of it, you can do much more interesting queries, queries that show you, like for example here, the, this query shows all the places that, all the uh, roads essentially, that have max speed forward equal to max speed backwards, which is, I mean, what's the point? Just set the max speed. Don't like but sometimes it's max speed forward, max speed backwards, and max speed are all the same value. That's very valuable, but that's, again, information that shouldn't be there. It should just have max speed. So that, it shows me that data. But on top of it, I can actually click on this item. There we go. And it shows me, look, these are the tags. I'm not sure if you can see it. Let me just make it a bit bigger. There we go. On this, at this place, it says, like, look, it's 25 miles an hour here, here, as well as there is a max speed already has 25 miles an hour. So it probably should get, be removed. On top of it, it says, well, you cannot edit it because like editing from space is kind of hard. So let's zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Okay, now we go. Okay, it looks like a regular road, but yes, this is probably 25, especially in the parking lot. So let's save this change. Oh my God, I just edited OSM from here. Like, um, because uh, this is what I did and this is a change set and I can go to it and uh, examine it. And I can easily find these things because they're all tagged as Sofox editor. Softbox edited, and uh, there was another one in the area. Oh, probably not, so let's close this change set, and uh, let me go to the other area. Oh, right here. 
I'm going to edit this one. Oh, there's a whole bunch of them. All right, I'm not going to waste your time, but the process is identical. So you have this tool not only to query things, but also to uh, try to fix the issues similar to MapRoulette or what's the other one I'm thinking of? Um, well, there's several of them that uh, do this kind of thing that find uh, issues with tags and allow you to very easily fix them. Um, wrapping up, let's see, data items. So I showed you the data items. One last thing I want to mention that a uh, new project I'm working on, if anyone is interested, please participate. Uh, how many of you have heard of open map tiles? Wow, more than Sparkle. Uh, that's impressive. Um, so open map tiles is wonderful, but it's been using um, fairly comp it has been fairly complicated to actually generate the tiles from it. I mean, you have to set up your own infrastructure, but it, there, there are a lot of steps involved and it's really complicated. So thanks to PostGIS that just rolled out this function called STSMVT. In other words, it does a massive query, SQL query against the Postgres database. And the result is actually a vector tile. It's a binary blob, small, small binary blob, which is very convenient because all of a sudden you do not need this middle layer called Mapnik. We all love it. Um, I'm not gonna comment, um, but we all love it. And um, that Mapnik is not needed anymore because you can just go directly into Postgres and you can create multiple of these read-only Postgres servers and just load balance between them to generate the data, to generate the vector tiles and have a one tiny little machine just kind of coordinating this and putting it all into a different store or whatever you need to do this. So it becomes, the whole data generation process becomes so much easier. And on top of it, you can, with some caching, probably even serve it directly to the users without even storing it, at least for the higher zooms, which means that I'm hoping one day to upgrade the raster tiles on the main OSM wiki site, oh sorry, not wiki site, OSM site, to use the vector tiles directly from Postgres, which hopefully will happen someday. Thank you very much. Do you have one? Uh, I have. Any questions? Yeah. Graph database? Uh, it's a Blaze graph. The, it's the same one that uh, Wikidata is using. Yes? Can you imagine OSM architecture? Uh, no, I cannot imagine. Becoming a graph. Uh, doing what? Becoming a graph. Uh, I don't becoming see that. Mm, I don't think that's uh, very applicable. It's with that many substantially separated objects. While you could do it, the performance and the will not be sufficient for that kind of uh, for that kind of use case. I don't think. Maybe once if the if the graph databases migrate, like become more efficient, uh, maybe. But for the, uh, I think the current model works solves most of the use cases and as individual objects stored in parallel, like a key value store essentially. Thank you.